which uh, two experts on boxing, Bill SF and uh, KC from, uh, from California, Bill SF from Amsterdam, uh, who will tell us everything there is to know about boxing that you want to know, and take it away. Okay, uh, I guess everybody can hear me. I have always noticed that when you talk up here, you can't hear me. Is it not on? Louder. I just speak like here. Now you can hear me. Now I can hear myself out there. Okay. Right. It's not a very good mic then. Hmm. Okay, I'm here to uh, to talk about, I guess they call it boxing. I thought it was going to be uh, phone freaking, which may be a broader uh, area, a broader topic. But So I was going to start off by explaining what uh, phone freaking is and what it is not, in my opinion, which I think is the general opinion of just about everybody. I'm getting nervous. Uh, basically, uh, freaking is, is manipulating the phone system. And and generally that we doing it in a way that is, is not usual. Uh, a very low level form of it, or at least today since it's been around for uh, many, many years, would be like red boxing. That that's true freaking because you're using signaling to tell the to tell the other side something is happening, in this case putting uh, putting money into the phone. Generally you think of phone freaking as uh, using the blue box. It's uh, it seems uh, a lot of people think that the blue box died. It's uh, it's uh, been in use in one form or another probably since the 40s, and still works today, and is expected to continue working uh, well into the 21st century. Though I wouldn't expect C5 it, to the developed world to be around much more than uh, 2000. 2000. Yeah, pretty much everything's going common channel, but that still doesn't mean you uh, can't freak or manipulate the phone system. But that's going to require other exploration, and there's probably people here that uh, uh, know something about that. But I, who knows? But today we should probably talk about here and now today, and mainly uh, answer your questions if, if uh, whatever questions you might have. It's a fairly small group, which is good. So uh, there might be some intelligent dialogue, and I see there's no uh, no press or anything here to uh, to make this thing into a zoo like what happened in Amsterdam, requiring us to. Uh, to conduct a small meeting where, where we uh, where we absolutely positively uh, forbade uh, any uh, uh, TV media. So, is there anything that people want to know in general, and they should ask questions to either Kevin or myself? Yes, that's called. Uh, oops. Uh, that's called a C5, and, uh, and the beep that you would hear was uh, this. Oops, that's not right. <laughs> oops, uh. Or you hear a little first. Uh, 2400 to pick up like this, or. Uh, yeah, and when you hung up, you get 2,600, like, uh, yeah, that's C5. Uh, what is that doing? What is, what C5 is, uh, it's, it's, it's very similar to R1, which R1 is the normal blue box where you would uh, do 2,600. Yeah. Macro Well, you always go macro more than that. Does, uh, you want a sequence? Oh, let's do a sequence here. We should probably okay. start off with R1 and just move through C5. Okay. Do you want me to do it? Do you want to yeah. Do it? We'll, we'll start off with R1. Okay. R1 was a, a, well, it's a program in R1 sequence. R1 was basically a fairly simple uh, system to use as far as the mechanical operation of it, but sometimes fairly complex as far as what codes you'd have to enter and uh, how you do it. But I will generate a typical R1 sequence and tell you what would be happening as if we were really doing this on the phone. Originally, I wanted to uh, kind of do the whole thing, start off, you know, the, how, how you get numbers that you can get trunks and uh, go through the operator and ask what, like, is the MCI uh, uh, direct number to Malaysia, which I understand you can use uh, C5 with, and then get on the phone and actually do a call. But when I hear stories about the FBI camped out on the, on the bottom floor and uh, 
coming up here and getting people and harassing them and telling them they have to be quiet about it or they're arrested. I think yeah, that's... Yeah, earlier I was approached... A little bit of paranoia. In I was approached by AT&T uh, this morning. I also had a, a, a New York City uh, detective come busting into my room uh, two days ago. So we're, 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 we're plenty pigged out and it's a little... Uh, You're welcome to come back with us to Holland, though. Right, that's a... Uh, but that's another idea, but still, uh, you got to be pretty low-key in Holland, but uh, if you do it once, you wouldn't get busted. In most countries, that's true, but here, uh, well, well, let's just simulate it. This is a demon dialer, and this stuff works here if you know what you're doing and where you're doing it from, and what they have. But uh, uh, we'll program one second of uh, 2600, which is required to seize and reset the line. And then, uh, after you do that, the truck will go bleak, and then you have to program a number. And you could just simply program a uh, simple number like uh, KP1, which is called KP here. Uh, KP2 is not used in the R1 system. And then you would uh, simply dial the area code, like 415, and then the weather say 9361212, and end with code 15, which is commonly called ST. And it would sound something like this. That would go, then it would go kaplink, and when you heard kaplink, you would just simply go. And that would uh, call the weather in San Francisco. Uh, but that's system C5. C5 is this. Uh, Uh, I'll do a typical uh, 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 C5 sequence, like for MCI and many other uh, carriers would use this sequence. Uh, <laughs> Oops, that didn't work right. It's supposed to be, uh, try this again. Well, for some reason, this is not doing it right. But you, well, we always hear the tape, but basically, uh, <laughs> uh, it would be, uh, is this tape of someone actually freaking? Make me a click call. Oh, okay. I have, so they were actually, someone was actually paying for the call. <laughs> Oh, so you're just commenting on what the system sounds like. Right. Well, uh, uh, we can probably do that later if I hear it. I mean, it's a... Uh, how many people in this room have uh, talked on an international line? Okay, good. People at least know what's going on. Uh, <laughs> The, the period of silence, yeah. that is when MF is being sent or whatever signal they're used. It may be a multi-frequency si system, it may be a, it may be a common channel system, it may be a lot of things. But if uh, there's a longer pause, there's a good chance it's an in-band system. You, in fact, that's one of the techniques you can often tell uh, what system you're up against because it's uh, uh, the slowness, how long it takes. In many cases, though, you'll actually hear its signal. If we had a phone line up here, we could show some of them. Oh, we get a phone line up here. Uh, you actually have some stuff you want to uh, demonstrate? If anyone has the issue of 2600 that has the 800 hours on it, I can show it. Uh, yeah, we remember we're on the line that cost us per call, but I guess it didn't hurt too bad. I think it was I'll two call. issues back. The issue before the current one is the one he's referring to that had a few numbers listed. Yes, spring 94. Okay. It's, it's uh, the one with Mark's bandana across the top. <laughs> uh, the first one. Yeah. So, you want to set the phone and do this, or uh, just point out? Okay. Yeah.
Well, uh, first I have to do is uh, call into the uh, network office and have them to give me an outside line. And uh, well, I don't want to use this with it because I just let you hear what the tones are. They, they mute the tones here in the States. I mean, I played with these numbers myself uh, before doing this. The tones aren't as loud and distinct as they are anywhere else. There, there is some attempt to filter them. Well, if you record them, what good would that do? They're, they're very easy to duplicate anyway. Yes, I mean, this, you're one of these, you can do it. Or a computer, no problem. If, however, if you use uh, most uh, home computers, at least the game computers, you know, like the Atari or the Amiga or so, you have trouble because the, 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 the video interrupt will, will cause it not to produce a uh, continuous tone. Even though it may add a nice musical quality to it, the phone company says, ah, Amiga. <laughs> we don't put all suit for that. Yeah. Sure. Lengths of tones are extremely critical with C5. That's the big difference between R1 and C5. Is that R1 worked by having a continuously sent 2600 that was removed to indicate the seizure of a line. C5 has a separate tone, 2400 plus 2600, to, uh, to clear the line and then just actually seize the line to get it to, to be dialable. You have to have another specially timed 2400 hertz, and then you can dial the numbers. Of course, you could never do C5 with just a manual device. It's got to be more than just a simple blue box. Is that analog, or are you using a? Yeah. This is using a. Uh, this is using a uh, Motorola uh, HC705 C8 processor with uh, a uh, home built D to A with uh, with resistors. Hello. It's mom. Somebody's playing with the phone. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to call into, uh, so I get outside line and we'll let Kevin uh, play with the phone and uh, hopefully someone's there to pot it up when uh, we go on. Dial, your wife is just dial. Dial her again. Okay. Well, you can talk to them while I'm trying to get this set up. All right, I think we should probably cover C5 a little bit more. <laughs> When I was in Israel, I played around with France for a while. And uh, to give you an example of how much the timing is critical, I was trying to make an international call. Back. Sure, sure, we'll do that right away, sir. Why don't you, why don't you hold on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't supposed to go on the PA system. Okay, sir. Well, I... Okay. Sorry. Sir, international call, zero one one. Uh, there will be no international calls made. Just wanted to make a few toll-free calls. Toll-free calls, sir. Yes. Oh, yeah. They're a dollar a piece, right? Ninety-five cents. For Ninety-five any... cents. Well, sir, for you, we got a special. It's only seventy-five cents. Wow. wow. Good deal. Yeah. All right. Thank you, operator. No problem, sir. Thank Bye. you. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Well, that's just someone in the network office here. Can we call your way? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, what's the number for your? Oh, there it is. Okay, two four five eighty four eleven. That's eight hundred. I dial nine to get the hotel PPX. I dial nine to get a real line. I think it's real. Uh, one eight hundred. Uh, two four five. Okay, pot it up fairly loud. It's uh, two four five eight four one one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wonderful phone system. I know for sure uh, I could try uh, well, Germany will work. Yeah, Germany. Uh, 292. Uh, 0049. Hey, a logical number here. Okay, turn it up fairly loud. This is muted. About as fast as cable and wireless. That's not a German ring. That's an American ring. Oh, yeah, sorry. Your call did not. Well, we might have. You might have to dial two one instead of nine. Oh, okay. That's right. It's a silly hotel uh, PBX system. Nine. 
And then two. Try your way again. Two, four, five, eight, four. That's a 1 800 number, normally free. Okay, try that. you heard were basically what C5 was and I have no idea what the correct timing here is to do it right but uh because I actually when I did that I didn't actually clear the line I just completely blew it away <laughs> but if it's done right probably if it was done with uh the tones right together in a macro it would have probably work what <laughs> what's this There was apparently no filter there. I mean, uh, right? Because well, you want to shorter tones, like yeah. This. this is why timing is so critical. Yeah. I mean, this would probably do it, and then you could go uh, uh, KP one. Uh, Try Uruguay again because it's one. It's pretty standard. He said it's pretty standard. This is this just takes a lot of balls to do it, but I'm not defrauding anybody. I'm just going to try to demonstrate cold uh, that the, the blue box still works. No fraud intended here because we're not calling anybody. We could call the operator in your way. Who could actually do a call for us if I wanted to social engineer her? And I'm going to request that she speaks English by doing, uh, by using two as the discriminating digit, which in this case is the language digit, and then uh, code 11, which means the operator. In the United States and Canada, it's 121, and then uh, everything, of course, ends with uh, ST or code 15. So uh, get to C5 like this. Does that work? It should. Then, it's uh, 150, 150. It's uh, 120, 120, which is probably close enough. <coughs> Hello? Somebody's talking with these phones. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll have to. Uh, If the time is right, just uh, we'll, we'll just we dial. Uh, if you want to dial the country, you you bleeped off. You use KP one or your normal KP. Then zero is a discriminating digit. You dial one of the country direct, direct numbers, number and you can like use the various. Actually, you don't really even need to dial a country direct number. I mean, if you want to pay for the call and unbox, you're certainly able to do that too. Depending on, on how the connection is made, yeah. If it's C5, it's possible. Yeah. Or there could be other systems used too, and I think the people at the network office are such idiots, they don't even answer the phone. What? Try it on yeah. They've disconnected the outside line. So, uh, it's a conspiracy. <laughs> yeah. I, but it's not connected directly to a phone line, and I cannot reach them at the network office. I wish somebody would go in there and tell them to do it right. But uh, they're just a bunch of kids, what can I say? <laughs> yeah. Yes. R1 is commonly used in the US contrary to popular belief. Uh, if you use OSPS, it'll use R1. Yeah. Hello? Oh, this is. 
Oh, it's just Okay, here we go. Uh, Put it on the end. Yeah. Please put this on the J system. And here we have to wait for it to pick up before we can. If you're using MCI, you don't have to wait. Where is the Where is You can't, you won't do it until it picks up. I think the, uh, the country direct number that we call is being routed through AT&T. takes a lot of experimentation to do it, and I'm really doing this cold. We lengthened the length of the clear forward, so it should, uh, should have a better chance of getting it. This should connect to the operator. Uh, but notice when you do this, it clears it up. Yes. Everybody else will have to seize it with 2400. Yeah. It might be. <laughs> it might help if we were directly connected to the line. It's yeah, not always well, possible. Uh, the tones to, have to be right in the right level, but uh, you got the idea where it disconnects the line, and if the tone levels were set right, it would probably have actually uh, have processed the call. Yes, R1 is uh, used extensively in the U.S., though the 2600 part of R1 is uh, not uh, very commonly used. It's used in a few places, and it's used in the emergency sometimes. But how it generally works is that uh, uh, out of band signaling, either a tone that's beyond the audio range, or a common channel, or even a DC form of signaling are used to uh, clear the line and seize it. And then ordinary MF tones, usually at the same rate we're using here, are sent down the line to uh, put the call through. It is very possible to dial a, a zero plus number, even an operator, clip the switch up for just the right amount of time. I found it takes about three seconds down here, a long time to put it down and then up and it goes clack and then we send the tones over. If you know what you're sending, you can uh, you can dial a number. I found that uh, that it is possible here. I was experimenting with some pay phones without a box, but just experimenting to see if I could get a trunk. And if you can tell if you get a trunk, if you wait like 15 seconds and it says, I'm sorry, your call did not go through, then you know you had an open trunk. That recording is the giveaway. The recording is just played when no signaling was received. Now what you have to do, and this was talked about in the social engineering uh, workshop, and I felt, and I think everyone felt it belonged more here, is that uh, you signal the number you're calling, and then you have to end with a code 11. They call it STP or something here. Let's shut this off. They call it, that's the, that's the slip trying to call back and reestablish the connection. So you call, uh, so you, uh, which is distracting, but so you go KP1, which is called KP, then the phone number, and then uh, code 11. And that is immediately followed by the A and I number. And that is ended with ST. This is all ran together in a string. At that point, the call goes through. And whatever A and I number you put on there is the number that call is going to be billed to. And of course, the number that will show up on anyone's caller ID or A and I or whatever. So here we have a very easy way to defeat the A and I. You have a method of doing it that does not involve sending 2600 hertz over the, over the phone line, which is the uh, way they catch people here, and generally it works. In fact, uh, many years ago, uh, beyond the statute of limitations, I was calling Europe every day from home, and uh, I never got hassled. All I got hassled for a lot of other things, but uh, not that. So it's about the same for like all these numbers? Yeah, well, like, if, you, if 
I heard a rumor from someone uh, in Pacific Bell that some of the cash registers that, that, that do ATM charges uh, in supermarkets for some reason generate 2,600 hertz every once in a while. So they constantly get messages there and they just seem to ignore them. Um, I've signaled quite a bit you know, from the states and I've never, never had any problems. It just seems that they've sort of forgotten about us. Well, freaking boxing, I mean, was officially dead, what, 10 years ago? At least, I mean, it's been officially dead for years, so I guess it's officially dead. As far as officials are concerned, it's dead. Yeah. It's echoing if there's any other extraneous sounds coming in. It, uh, it, it interferes with it. Coupling to the mouthpiece is very important. And this is a demonstrator box. This is not intended to uh, even be used for freaking. This is a box to demonstrate the deep It's got eight on the speaker. You're supposed to use something out of a telephone like this. So uh, it's really not wrong equipment. I'm surprised it didn't clear the line in the first place. So yes, coupling is all important in uh, where loop boxing is very common, as in uh, Europe, especially from Holland. Uh, the, the level can often be like within one dB. If you're more than one dB away, it says fuck you, and there's no call. Back there. Can you remove the digicom that are figuring out I can't speak for the digicom modem, but the, the Zixol modem most definitely can be used to do anything this device does. But a very additional bonus, a very good bonus, is that it can actually listen to what's coming back. So it can make freaking totally automated. And, there, and the company does supply, uh, supply you with the tools to make it do anything you want it to do. I mean, that, if you happen to have one of those expensive things, it's a good alternative to this. Only a high-speed phone, of course. That's it. Yeah, it's gonna work. Um, yeah, because it does. You know, it says it does voicemail and it does uh, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, that thing will do anything you can do with a phone line. How do you say it here? Zinsel. Zinsel. Yeah. It's a very common motive. I mean, they're all over the place. Also, the documentation When you call international, you never hear this tone? Where do you call it? When you call France, uh, uh, it's probably going out over TAT 8. TAT 8 mostly uses. Uh, Use the common channel. It's a uh, yeah. It's rolled out 1990. Actually, single system seven. I should call it common channel. That's a good one. After 1990. Uh, Russia, you're almost certainly you're probably going to go into London, and then from London it will go on a C5 circuit to Moscow. It's very likely to be a C5. It may even be a bizarre system that uses like 1260. Now, did, uh, now, this is a story here. Uh, uh, I have schematics to it, but it won't do any good. It requires a uh, HC705 C8, which is a processor program. And you have to get the, you have to use our software, that processor. Of course, we don't sell software on a disk because we get distributed on, uh, on bulletin boards and on nets and what have you. You can, get the, you can get the kit and the chip. You buy the chip, the kit is thrown in free. It's only like about 50 guilders or less than $30 worth of parts. You can no longer get them from us anymore. We have uh, turned this over to uh, to the Chaos Computer Club and we get it through them. In fact, here's the person we talked to. Maybe you should set it up to. This is Andy. How much are you going to be $500. You can't uh, there will be about 350 bucks, but uh, I think there will be someone some, uh, from 2600 distributing them directly to the US, so there will be an ad for one of the 2600 issues about them. I can't say the price now because at the time we only have the big kids, they are about 
on this size, you know, that, that uses for a unit. And uh, normally we have a luxury model, which is just a special ladder. And now we try out to maybe that the manufacture because uh, it's maybe a little bit better, better when you're in a paper and uh, don't have such an apparatus there to do lots of. <laughs> Okay, I mean, uh, I guess I'm kind of playing on the last workshop. Is that we were talking about three calls, and I understand that, uh, that the people do tend to be poor out here, and uh, and uh, we want to do three calls. <laughs> but, but, no, I'm just saying in America, in general, people uh, the, you know, the average uh, standard of living is a little bit poor, and I think some people are starving students. There's a lot of those around here, all of them. Want to make three calls, but really the reason for doing this is to. Uh, to know you can do it and also have a way of making calls. Like, hey, for example, uh, uh, my housemate, Rob, was uh, was in Moscow when the tanks rolled in and the coup happened. You think you can dial Moscow by uh, using 011? If you think so, uh, think again because, uh, or there would be 09, it was not possible. So uh, by having one of these, it was very easy. It was very easy to go through another country, use a, uh, a priority code, and essentially dump off the person that had been talking the longest to Moscow on that trunk and then take that line. <laughs> What's this? Yeah. 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 AT&T will make it happen. Yes. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. AT&T will definitely make it happen if you're, uh, you, you can, uh, I mean, I, again, I didn't, I mean, I can demonstrate for exploring, but uh, I think two people would take this as a thought opportunity and I know that the feds here are not too happy about the whole thing. Mailing says that you use one of these things, it's not a getting a free call. I mean, that's, that's, that's piddly stuff. It's that if you use one of these things, Big Brother can't really watch it. I mean, the call becomes untraceable. I think that scares them. So, uh, I'm a little bit funny about actually saying, this is how you do it step by step, but I can outline the, uh, the mindset. I've already been through this before with the magnetic stripes on another workshop. Uh, what the basic uh, hacker mindset is. If you have that mindset, this is no problem because it's uh, like any other hack. It works exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's computers, blue boxes, magnetic cards, chip cards, any hack, it all works the same. You just got to be clever and take the problem step by step and not be impatient and jump from step A to step D to step Z. You can't do that. You have to do it one step at a time. And, and in terms of uh, use of the box, this requires uh, Probably more persistence than just about anything else. This is what's very funny here is that uh, uh, the, the North America country number is 01 uh, uh, uses, goes out and their signals to say the line is busy, and it sends a signal back to give a local busy, or say the signal is ringing, give a local ring. That's C7. That's C7. It may be ringing in Russia, because what's really happening is London is saying it's ringing. London's telling you Russia's ringing. No, because London's got a C7. Why don't you go up there, Andy? So this is what Donald Trump is doing. That's not what we're doing. Like, uh, <laughs> well, that's like, I'm sorry, that's a British. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah. They were like that, and a Russian picked it up. Yeah, you don't understand how this is. What C7 is doing is it, it, it uh, is told the other side to ring. You must trust that it's really ring. It's trusting Moscow. Moscow's saying, okay, it's ring. Moscow's telling England it's ring. England's telling, uh, telling the C7 here it's ring. You don't know it's really ring until they pick up. In fact, sometimes there's a problem and you'll hear it ring and then you're busy. Yeah. And sometimes you can call people and you'll hear it ring and everything sounds normal. You're getting busy. And then when you finally get through the person, you find, you find out that you harassed this person terrifically because you called their phone and rang 30 times and there's been no way there. Why should it ever stop? I mean, that's traditional. It's just like an old switch. 
They'll probably, uh, no, that's, that's the British ring. Yeah, you can drive on the left side of the street. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> well, every country has a right to use its own ring and its own uh, business. Yeah. What? I didn't say it was bad. No. I mean, most systems, most systems use a, uh, use a, uh, a single tone for the ring, 440 hertz or 430 hertz in some places, so you don't use the tone tones to your instruments. And uh, typical ring is one second on and two seconds off, which is much faster than the ring here. So, uh, I mean, the, the, if you compare the phones of the world to the US system, you have no idea what the phone systems look like. The, the USA and Canada are completely isolated uh, for the rest of the world, as far as the Rings are completely different everywhere else in the world. What about Mexico? Mexico uses the standard uh, international uh, ring, which is uh, one second of uh, 440 on and two seconds off. So if you call through uh, call through ATT, you probably hear the, the ring you're used to hear from the public store. Okay. Remember, I'm not a uh, tone decoder. I know some people can actually uh, become tones in their head. Three three is the country code. One. 
Well, it's officially code in the numbers. I just want to know what was the uh, the sequence of tones. Uh, there was one sequence of tones plus another sequence of blue box tones, and then a, and then some other tone on top of the blue box tones. Could you just explain? And then the picking up. Okay, uh, you're, you're we're actually there's, there's two, more. I'm sorry. There were two systems involved here. There was R1 involved and C5. The first thing you heard was a connection to the international sender. They used to use codes like uh, 186, 182 or now just 18 anything and you'll get a sense. So now that's what they were dialing, 182? KP1, 182, ST. That was the first set of tones. And the equipment automatically listened for a uh, tone to come on the line. Right, that was a doo. Yeah, you know, and then that tone came on, it dialed the number in France. It went KP1, zero is a discriminating digit, 331 plus whatever number she gave you, and ST. Okay, next it went on to the, the, there was a little pause then, next it went on to the C5 circuit. Then it went KP1, and then it went KP1, zero, when it was into France, zero, and then another. As you, in other words, as it picked up, is that what you're talking about? No, when, from the sender, you went to the sender and dialed the number in the sender, which turned around, it's a machine that has trunks going all, to all places in the world. It sees the C5 line to France. I see. And then, since it was a terminal call to France, it dialed KP1, zero. Say all the lines to France were busy. It might have gone to Norway. Well, then it would have gone KP2, 3, 3, because KP2 means country code is a follow. It would have done 3, 3, and then it would have done zero as a number. I have another example of me calling international directory systems in London, and I get a recording that all circuits um, information is busy. I could play you that one. That, that may be a little different. <laughs> okay, we'll wait for that. If there's any questions, uh, do you guys realize that, that a lot of the breathing that goes on in the United States today um, originated because of uh, back in the 60s and the late 60s uh, with the tax that they added on to our phone bills because of the Vietnam War? I, yeah, I, I don't know if you folks all know about that, but. Uh, well, I, uh, I guess I'm older than I look. I mean, I came like within about two years of that party. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then we have that? Okay. I guess that was just ignoring them. And then, and then well, what happened was then there was a magazine out called Overthrow that used to publish. Okay. I wish there was a set of headphones to cue this up with. Because they would not volunteer the headphones. <laughs> but, um, but the, the thing is, there was a, there was a, 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 a magazine put out by a, a, a political uh, group uh, that, that used to put out the credit card codes. And they were very simple. Um, they weren't what they are now. What they are now is like your calling card is, is it essentially, I believe, it's a random number after you. You believe it's a random number, but I have somebody here who can tell you completely different. Okay. might even be able to offer you some software that will tell you completely different. Okay. But I'll leave it to him. I'd like to, yeah, like to hear that. Um, and, and You'll go up here and talk about it if you want. Substitution code that went on back then. Yes, I wear that. And they'd always tap and always publish what it was going to be uh, months before the new credit cards came out. And it was and it was and it would work on anybody's number, any number. It was on your car with the new system. You need to know the right digit. It was just a simple, the simple check digit. The operator could use a simple little uh, arithmetic and figure out. Yeah. In fact, until recently, you could also use A B C D as a pin. Yes, yeah, so that was funny how this was wide open for about six months, and uh, it seemed like I was no way found out about it. People selling codes thought it was such a joke that I had to use ABCD with any number, even a 555 number, and would say thank you for using ATG and make a call. <laughs> Which, uh, from an ethical standpoint, there's nothing wrong with doing that because nobody's getting the phone bill. I mean, with the ABCD trick, I could put the phone bill on anybody I wanted. Call Marisat, and AT&T charges a lot more than uh, the seven or eight dollars a minute our office telling you about. It's long, nice long guys. Yes, it disappeared, and they were uh, they called one of my friends that was using it heavily, saying that we're not going to try to charge you for the calls, but we could not figure out how you completely uh, 
uh, to patch our system. They wanted to know how it was done. How? What, what happened? A, B, C, D, B, X, 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 what, what were these doing? You just used that. That was uh, the test pin. They, there's still a test pin oh, that involves fourth code. Oh, yes. Oh. ABCD was the uh, university. Oh, there it is. Yeah, what are you saying? Yeah, there still is one, but uh, there's actually uh, there's actually an algorithm that determines your normal pin, the natural pin. Uh, I mean, it's a checksum. It takes the pin and the call card number, puts it into an algorithm, and it spits out as good as that. So if you go through, uh, so if you go through all the combinations with these checks, you can uh, you can take a number and find a pin. But they uh, 46, you can do about 40 seconds or so. I believe. Now they can change it, but if you pick your own pin, then when it goes to check, it has to go online and check it. It takes about twice as long for it to set up. So there is advantage of having the check right there because you call the through picker. But uh, sure, it's easy to hack that up. I imagine you could uh, make up pens for uh, numbers of line in the phone company. Then you wouldn't feel bad about doing it. Wait, wait, wait. My understanding is that, unlike the old days, currently, if there isn't a legitimate calling card assigned to a number, no set of four digits will work. That wasn't the case with ABC and D. Well, that made an exception, but as far as the regular one, that's my understanding. Maybe I'm incorrect. I can't guarantee you. Can I say something? Well, there's there's one. One. I don't know. Right, right here. I just want to say that some call cards, the Intel call, the Intel call call cards, they got the ABCD. Actually, it's not ABCD. It's, it's I can tell you, it, it, it's either AB45 or ABC. Yeah, 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 it's either ABC45 or ABC. Yeah, it's either ABC45 or ABC. Yeah, it's either AB45 or ABC. Yeah, it's either AB45 or ABC. Yeah, it's either ABC45 or ABC. Yeah, it's either ABC45 or ABC. Yeah, it's either ABC45 or ABC. Yeah, it's yeah, I think you said that there was an ID. No, but I did. I have to talk about it as soon as I read the code or about those Okay, we have a special guest that's going to be coming on the phone, so we're going to pop up the phone next. And I think everyone will be uh, surprised. Can you just patch the call? I'll go first.
and we can only call collect. And where previously we paid for our own calls, we can only call specific numbers. Now anyone can call collect anywhere. So there's lots of people always waiting to use the phone. Mark, are you able to hear me any better now? Yeah, I can. Okay, let's, uh, <laughs> let's give Mark that applause again so he can hear it. since January, um, and I called Winter Day, we took you over there, and uh, last we heard you won't be out till November, is that correct? Yeah, November 22nd. Okay, uh, perhaps you can tell us what a, what a typical day at school kill in Pennsylvania is like. Oh, where, where can I begin? Um, well, at the present time, at least we have fired from the competition. What I'm doing right now is uh, what's known as a range order lease. And orderly being basically janitor. And uh, ranges are, there's two buildings here that we can make live in. And each of the two buildings is divided up into four ranges, which are basically like barracks, like in the army or, or the military. They're just open cubes. And there's uh, a bunk bed in each cube, and there's two people living in each one. The range orderly basically does uh, all those exciting things like mopping the floor and we use uh, floor buffers like you see in department stores because they have wax floors and uh, apparently they were very anal here about uh, cleanliness. You've gotten in trouble several times for not uh, not making your bed or some craziness like that. You want to tell us about that? Back in the winter time earlier this year, I was uh, penalized for not having my blanket folded or some kind of nonsense. And I wasn't aware of the fact that I was being penalized then, and I ended up uh, getting extra duty, which involved uh, me having to shovel snow, in addition to the fact that I was on uh, snow detail, or as they would call it, landscaping. <laughs> but uh, I was shoveling all the time in the winter time. Uh, well, now, you're allowed to have visitors only on the weekends, and, and in that case, so, uh, only a very limited number of people, and you also um, were limited to a certain number of people making phone calls. Perhaps you could explain it, what the bureaucratic process and the crap you had to go through uh, for both of those, of those privileges was. Okay. For visiting, what we have to do is we have to send out a form to somebody that we want to be added to our visiting list. People just can't show up on a whim and visit us. What they have to do is that they have to fill out the form and return it, which asks all kinds of various personal things about them, like whether or not they're a criminal and so forth. And um, they add the person to the list, usually within a few weeks off upon getting the form back again. And once that happens, they can come and visit on Saturday and Sunday and federal holidays from uh, about nine o'clock in the morning until three in the afternoon. With the telephones, what we have to do is, um, oh, and by the way, with visitors, we can only have roughly a dozen people on the visiting list, that's it. For the telephones, normally, when they weren't messed up like they are now, we can only have a maximum of 20 people's phone numbers on our telephone list, and again, they have to be pre-approved with forms. Um. I can't really think of much more to ask because I've, I've asked these questions many times. So, okay, people are asking what uh, what we should send you, what we can send you. Uh, well, I just I just like it when people write. I like to hear from people on the outside. People don't really have to worry about sending me anything specific because I mean I really have everything I need to get along. But I just like to continue to hear from people. Letters, lots of letters. Yeah. Okay, we have another question? Uh, ask him, like, why he hasn't been right back. We've written him before asking for visitation, and I've gotten nothing. Are you able to hear that? No, I can't. Hi. Okay. Uh, Christian is, is here. He says hi, and uh, he wants to know how come you don't write back when people ask uh, <laughs> if, um, 
if they can visit you and to be added to the visitation list, is, is there a particular reason? Well, to tell you the truth, the reason why I usually don't write back is that, at, at least for a while anyway, I was just getting tons and tons of mail. And if I wrote to one person, I would feel guilty about not having written to someone else because I was just getting so much mail. But aside from that, I was never really big on writing letters, and I hope nobody really takes it personally. I read everybody's mail that I get, and uh, it kind of depresses me to really have to sit and dwell about, uh, you know, dwell on what it is I'm going to say to people that I know when I really have nothing at all to say, because every day here is exactly the same as the next. There's nothing new I, I possibly have to say to anyone. And I really get a lot more out of hearing from people because there's so much more going on back in the real world than there is here. Uh, Mark, uh, what is it that you, uh, you find you miss being out uh, on the boondocks there? What are you, what are you looking forward to most when you get out? Well, I'm looking forward to a lot of things, but uh, the, the very most is probably uh, just contact with people, with, with you know, real people. And of course, food. The food here is horrendously horrible. I'm looking forward to eating tons and tons of really good food. And uh, of course, what I like to do for a living, computers. I, I don't have any contact with any computers of any kind whatsoever. Oh, are you going to do anything different when you get out? Has your, has your mind been altered by this experience? Well, it, it's been altered and scrambled up a little bit over the uh, the past eight months that I've been here, but hopefully I can iron out the creases once I get home and I have time to unwind and get back to reality. But um, I think I was already on the right track uh, long before I got here. I'm just going to continue doing what, what it was I was doing. Yeah. Okay, we have any more questions? We have questions. We have a question from Rebel. Yeah. Okay. 
Hey, Stacy, you beat me if he calls back. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. made in rather a weird way. Um, Mark had to collect call to Echo, which is an internet site here in New York City, um, because we can't make collect calls to here. And uh, we called Echo, and Stacy Horn had to punch in two lines at once, which is why the connection wasn't that great. But it's, it's really a miracle we were able to reach him at all. Uh, we didn't think it would be possible. Sometimes he's not able to get to a phone for, for days at a time. So uh, we'll also have the, uh, the, the little speech he wrote, which runs about three minutes, uh, a little bit later on. Yes, go back to your panel. Go back to the panel. You can play the rest Yeah, can you hear me first? Yeah, I think they should probably put the board back up. <laughs> Yeah, yes, you can put the slip line back. Yes. No. No. All right. Oh, okay. But it keeps calling me back. If you can stop it from calling us back, you can do it back. Okay. Uh, both about
Or whatever it is in French. Are, is anyone having trouble hearing us? Is there more on this tape? Or there is? more interesting to the people here to uh, to get the live material, yeah. The live material? That's already discussed. I have a question. I noticed that They try to charge you for it. I right, say so call your local phone company and they will have to take it out. No 800 number can't charge you under any circumstances. As far as I know, that is the rule. Yeah. But even if you do stay on with an 800 number, they try to put it on your phone bill like billing you through the 10XXX system. You can take it off. There's no way. You sue them otherwise. Yeah, there was a company that was charging $150 per call for dialing their 800 number. <clears throat> but they weren't charging you for dialing that 800 number per se, it was for their services. And that's that's the loophole that they got it on. But they could, they were actually charging through the person's phone number? Yeah, they were. So of course they couldn't make that charge stick because they said, I'm not an 800 number, this is like that. Well, all you really need to do is just give them advice and then uh, send them a bill. <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. No way. Traditionally, 800 numbers are free. I mean, I've read a little bit about this. Well, that's what I do. Yeah, but they still time. send stuff to collections. They can, can they collect 900 calls here? Can they legally collect it? I don't think so. Yes. Right, but they continue to charge for the further ones. Uh, by the way, they have a little funny. They have bad credit. Well, people had known them to be sober. They may have these three thousand couple years ago. Still one. That guy's changed. If you have a problem, I have to call them and they'll say, "Hey, the kids calling for you." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to block off the fence. A lot of times they don't put it on right away. Well, only they open it on for months. Guess what? They have to call them. You told them you would rest the block. They have another record. You call. They have another block. So what happens? Guess what? Of course, I know that's true, but uh, again, the, the title of this uh, uh, conference was Boxing, and I think we should get back to the topic. I mean, there aren't, there, there, aren't, uh, there, aren't, uh, there aren't TV cameras out there, there aren't press. Uh, it doesn't have to be great into politics like it did last time uh, the two of us tried this stuff. <laughs> Bill, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, fun with some operators? That's what I wanted to get to. This is more into a pre camera uh, uh, we're going to keep the uh, instance you want to. Uh, shall we talk about uh, calling into the Well, for instance, uh, calling operators and asking them where they think you're calling from. Oh, you're talking about when we're, when we're partying. When we call, okay, I don't know what he's talking about now. It, you probably know there are several direct services, like AT&T Direct, MCI Direct. And, uh, every country, just about every uh, developed or semi-developed country has such a direct service. You get your operators in your home countries. In your uh, home country and in your own language, blah, blah, all those crazy benefits mean nothing. And uh, uh, sometimes it, it's fun to have fun, especially with your, uh, like here with the at t or uh, in Holland with the PTT. Because when you call a toll free number in, a, in one country, it just translates to a regular, uh, regular line and then uh, connects. 
So, uh, so it, it's, we can uh, call up and say, well, we're a bunch of students. I mean, I've actually done this myself. I've, I've called, uh, I've driven operators nuts by, uh, by being in France for one call and then calling from New Zealand and then calling uh, from Italy and then calling from the US. <laughs> but, uh, but by simply, if you know, if you can find the numbers by social engineering or, or whatever process you want to use, uh, it, it's, it, you can make it look like you're traveling very fast. <laughs> so, I kind of caught off guard on this one because this is definitely not was not in my outline going to this, but it's uh, that's not really freaking. It's kind of it's more social engineering, but half of freaking is social engineering, so there's no problem with uh, with freaking stuff. Maybe you want to add some more. Maybe you remember some stuff uh, that uh, I'd rather not mention it. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we have the guy up here in the social engineering workshop. Of course. Same way the guy demonstrated up here. Exact same for these. In fact, he should have uh, he should have grabbed the most expensive 900 number and uh, gotten the, the back door for it. It would have worked the same way. I don't know how to do that. I can care less if it's on 900 or 063 numbers or uh, it's the same thing in politics. Fortunately, they have a uh, one gilder a minute uh, limit, which is like sixteen dollars. Oh, seven hundred. Uh, that's in that more. Uh, I'm understanding. Oh, seven hundred is the customer determines where it goes to. Right? It, it's a it's customer. So it's a remote uh, ordering function. Yeah. I don't think most nine hundred do that way, but uh, it's eight hundred to be programmed that way. But uh, you're asking questions about a phone system uh, that I'm not really. Uh, I don't really play stuff as I, I haven't played with the phone system here for like about four years. So uh, the question is probably best directed to Kevin to uh, tell you probably a lot more about the US phone system. Yeah. Are there any specific questions? I'm not actually sure about 700. Uh, does anyone want to talk to Mark? Yeah. Uh, I should do that to the uh, audience. Hi, Rob. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to check if, uh, if it's uh, if the DID is connected. We have Mark available, and uh, I think the audience wants to be speaking to him for you. Okay. Okay, we can still talk about. Uh, uh, whatever uh, you want to talk about. That was just a time that I know the doctor was coming on line. And I can be more fascist about it. It was a courtesy thing. It's just to say, hey, the doctor is on line. What was the question? But there was not a tone uh, when you call a TSPS. TSPS would produce a tone when the operator came on, so you know the operator came on. And like the same tone that would come on if the operator would break into your, into your line. It should be noted this tone is generated in the console. So I'm going to get back to the board and we'll up on uh, this thing. Okay, uh, we have Mark again. And yeah, we have certain microphones off. Here. Okay, great. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, anything? Anything? Do you have to wait on again to make another phone call, right? Uh, yeah, we have a warning of like uh, a click. It's one click uh, a minute beforehand and another one about 10 seconds beforehand. Wait as long as it's right now. This makeshift setup only gives us one warning. Did, did you ever find out who Lantel was? Is? Mark? No. Uh, Lantel is the company that uh, that places collect calls. Yeah. But you can't find anything out about them. No, the suspicious things, but it says it like a synthesized voice when you make a correct call. And um, I had uh, a couple of people, in fact, try to find out who they were, find out what the rates were. And there's no one bell in the state of Pennsylvania, at least with a list of telephone numbers, or 800 directory assistance. 
And the Public Utilities Commission in Harrisburg, capital, has never even heard of Hot Mill. Okay, one of our audience members said it's the same prison problems, and that's all he knows. Um, Rock Hill is the company that, uh, that makes these collect calls. So far, I guess none of us have gotten the bill. Is that, is that right? In fact, uh, I'm just guessing, but like a lot of small companies, I'm sure that they're just uh, contracting an outside uh, billing agent so that the bills are going to be a few months behind. Because no one that's gotten the most recent bill has anything on there about it. Mark, can you, uh, can you just tell us for people that might not know uh, a couple of details of your case uh, when it started and uh, what the ultimate result was? Okay, well, legally, the first time it started was in 1990. But in actuality, there's uh, an investigation, of various different investigations going on back from the early 1980s that uh, back then it was basically them investigating just a name, a handle, and not knowing who it was in real life or where they were or anything like that. But um, they pretty much picked up information as they went along as they uh, and raided other people. But uh, ultimately what I was charged with was having access to computers in pretty much every regional telephone company in the country. <laughs> switching systems and so on and so forth. And um, access to the computers of uh, a lot of multinational, multi-million dollar corporations all over the world through uh, British Telecom's TimeNet. And uh, originally after being raided in 1990 and arrested in 91, I was charged at the state level still being a minor and nothing really ever came of it when some uh, activities of a uh, few other people came to light and it was found out that those people were in contact with myself and a couple of other people. The feds uh, turned it into a whole grand scheme, a whole grand conspiracy, and we all got raided and, and myself for a second time, which as far as I'm concerned was only because they weren't satisfied with the outcome of the first time. This was in uh, December of 1991. And then we were indicted in July of 1992 under uh, myself, under two counts, the first being conspiracy and the second being uh, unauthorized access to federal interest computers, so basically computer trust counts. And those are both uh, felony counts. And I faced uh, two to five years from now. I prepared to go to trial and was the last person who intended on going to trial after everyone else eventually, one by one, had pled guilty. Various people were uh, involved in providing uh, evidence as informants, and one of the five indicted people uh, cooperated with the uh, prosecution and said, and you see, that's what we need no time. What happened was, uh, I prepared to go to trial with my attorney, prepared for a year's time, and finally, in uh, the summer of 1993, at the very final moments, I decided to throw in the towel because I felt like I was standing alone. And uh, the most beneficial thing I could say out of the whole thing was that I got to see all the evidence against me for whatever it's worth. And I, and I got to see how it is that they go about performing an investigation and building a case and basically how they, how they operate. They being the feds and the uh, U.S. attorney. And I feel that I made an informed decision rather than having chosen to put guilty blindly early on. Uh, um, you were sentenced to a year and a day in prison, which means that uh, the earliest you can get out is uh, November of this year, is that correct? November. Uh, is, there, is there anything you can say to the people here concerning? Um, uh, what you've learned, should, should, should people be uh, uh, real careful as far as this kind of thing goes? Uh, should they avoid it altogether? Any advice? Well, I'm not going to be the one to tell people what to do. I think they should fully be using their best judgment. But uh, just be aware of the fact that it doesn't matter what you did, even if you were accused of having done something, 
they will find something to charge you with and they will find you guilty of that thing, whatever it is. Because they're in control of the courts and at the very least they can charge you with conspiracy for the most minutest of things. And conspiracy in and of itself is a felony and it carries a penalty of two to five years. So I just want people to be aware of the fact that things are really, really crooked. And even if they're not doing in what they consider what they consider anything wrong or anything immoral, that if they want you bad enough, they're gonna find something to stick to you with. It's just that simple. Uh, we only touched upon uh, on your last call for a moment the medical uh, issue. Can you tell us exactly what, what occurred there? Well, uh, pretty much uh, I don't get any medical treatment whatsoever. I, I mean, I have been getting uh, certain med uh, medicine I need for a uh, digestive disorder, uh, which is mainly caused by stress and just happened to coincide with when I, was, when I first had my legal problems. But, um, the uh, medical facilities here are extremely lax. People do not get the proper attention that they need. The people obviously do that are far more serious than I am with heart conditions and uh, all kinds of problems. But um, they're very lax at getting people their uh, medication when they need it or even getting their medication at all. Now, in your case, though, was were you not uh, denied a particular type of medication that you need? Denied isn't really the word. I just never got it. Yeah, after complaining about it numerous times, I never got everything that my doctor on the outside says was necessary to be paid. Uh, at this point, I want to ask people if they have any questions in the audience. Go ahead. What are the other um, people like that are in there with you? question is, what are the other people like that you're in with? Uh, there's, there's people here for various reasons. A lot of them having to do with uh, I guess money-related crimes like uh, bank fraud and things like that. There's no marketing fraud people here. And uh, there's a lot of uh, non-violent drug offenders here. Whether it be people that are used for possession or people that were uh, drug dealers on the street or whatever. So that, that's pretty much, uh, it's, it's not only white collar and it's not like uh, people tell you. It's not like a, uh, so nice uh, country color or anything like that. It's not like that at all. No tennis courts. Nothing like that. Can you tell us something about the first day right, right after we dropped you off? Well, if you really want to hear about it, uh, we came on the weekend and no one told us otherwise that no one was going to hear the process. They, they uh, put me in uh, segregation in the uh, Federal Correctional Institute, which is not the camp, but the real prison. And uh, I was locked up in a place that people up here call the hole. Basically because it is a hole, it's a hole in the wall. Where uh, you're in a small room by yourself and uh, you know, you're locked inside and uh, whenever it's meal time, they unlock a hole in the door and they give you tray food. And that's basically the extent of it. So I was uh, in there about a day and a half and I was uh, extremely nervous and was sick from nerves and sick from the food. And on uh, Monday morning, I uh, I was feeling pretty sick and I puked all over the place. And then they came and got me and uh, it was time for them to take me up, uh, up here to the camp. And uh, I was just very disoriented. It was a very uh, disoriented experience first getting here. The reality shock gets you the most. I should probably point out to the audience that the, the keyboard you hear is not Mark. That's uh, that's that Stacy over at Echo. Uh, Mark, uh, what's, what kind of high tech do you have access to? What's that? Uh, do you have access to any kind of high technology at all? No. The highest technology that I that I have is my digital watch and my uh, and my radio. But, uh, we just got our 15 minute notice again. Okay, so I'll let you talk to the end then. All right. Um, well, I, uh, I had recorded a speech, and I just want to say that I hope uh, people get something out of it. And uh, I, don't, I don't want to talk too much about it because I just want them to listen to it themselves. But uh, I hope that it strikes a chord with uh, people there today. Okay, let's give Mark a round of applause.
Mark? I'm here, but I'll wait for a few more seconds. There's still time to mention gamers. Oh, and he's on. Okay, Stacy, thank you very much for your help. Okay, take care. We'll, uh, we'll play the speech in a few minutes and we'll have prizes to give away and the you will contest and all that
the universal uh, password for the at t system on the column charts was a very likely choice. It would be very likely to use for the column because hardly any phones or even dialers in the states have that, uh, that for the column. So it said it must be a for the column. But the funny thing is that I just tried the ABCD because it seemed like it was a real logical first thing to try, and it worked. Next I would have tried probably A, 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 and other combinations of that. But that didn't work out with the in the fourth column and the uh, numbers. There is, of course, another code now that changes to create the anything that forces the fourth column and other numbers. Are you? No, I call that ATG Direct. It's uh, 06022 9111. It's the operator of the USA. And there's a digital machine with an AT&T thing that the you're calling and it goes on and you get your code. And it works here in the U.S. It works in the world that has AT&T direct. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, some, uh, some bad signals and we uh, 
black Belgian monk. It was the middle of the night. We totally cut Belgian monk. And we cut it off in 15 minutes. We are probably sitting the poor guy scampering around like you wouldn't believe. So uh, you've got to be responsible to do this stuff. I don't say I didn't do that, but uh, somebody else who's kind of... We don't know who did it. We don't know who did it. All the trucks got tied. What did you do? How was it jam? I don't know. He, a key was released too early. Well, what the result of what happened? All the trucks got tied up going to jam? I don't think it was a matter of looking the trucks. It just uh, somehow, because there, there was so much activity. There were, we were like, you know, uh, we were causing this machine in the middle of the night. I mean, they definitely saw the light on the monitors. We were causing this machine to. Uh, we're just using circuits. Bang, bang, bang. You're all the web basically. No one at a time, but I think the thing I'm so confused. Yeah, I guess. I guess. We're also uh, we're trying a different uh, we're trying different things to see if we can use different codes and uh, just messing with it. And uh, certainly something bad got hit. Who yeah. So uh, it is possible, it is possible to knock all the lines down. I mean, there is a danger. And see, seven even more so, because that you use the computer, and it's going to really, uh, do you think you want to call every three seconds or so it's fast? You go a lot faster than that with uh, some seven. And that's that seven is uh, some seven. And, uh, C7 is uh, the international designation of but unlike any other signaling system, C7 or SS7, it's a, it's a national system and it's an international system. It's a system that can be used to create type of signals across town or around the world. This is very possible. It's probably going to India systems because they're much smaller. C7 goes there. Yeah, <laughs> you make it call somewhere and use what's available. I mean, there, there might be, a, like in the States, you can quite, when you call somewhere, you quite look for R1, and you can call within the United States, and then it goes out to a, uh, go R1 so you can uh, see the watch of your carrier is going to be in your side. So it's one of the off the wall carriers you can see on R1. ATT is right in the, in the SSF. But if you use uh, some uh, off-brand carrier, you like to go on R1. But then you have a chance to do the C7 or a C6. Or the system is going to be in the system. It's 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 going to be in the system. And one other number, it's probably going to be in the system. It's going to be in the system. Do that with that it doesn't have to. <laughs> the glory reverse. <laughs> we should probably take this off one. You can talk to me about this uh, after the day. I'm not sure if this is general interest. Uh, any other questions as far as that? Or, uh, you're still in the race? I'm just thinking that there are several sexual issues. So, uh, there was six one nine one one. Are you going to say correct? Right? Oh, I just said the number. Are you going to say correct? All of us. Yes. You can call here. Dial 11131. And then drop the zero. So 6. 022. 9111. And you will get USA correct. And ask ask the operator that you have what country you're in. And we'll show you how to call it will pay for call halls unless you are not making free call. Sure, you can call a friend connect from Holland and do this. It's a tech service, it's a credit card. Call it from the US. Uh, you can call 011 and then 316022. 9111 in the name of the pound, and then we'll connect you to USA Direct from Hall. You can also do it through uh, multiple other countries. Not all, it can't be through Germany, you can probably do it in Norway, for instance. Any 
Maria. Okay, stick around. We have uh, we have the finalists, and we have some other surprises. We're almost finished. So uh, take a couple minutes, stretch your legs, and come back because we've got some interesting stuff. <laughs> Thank you. 